God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Look on us, Lord, and see how we are despised. And yet you have rejected and spurned, and are angry with the one you have anointed. You have broken your covenant with your servant, and dishonored his crown in the dust. You have broken down all his walls, and reduced his fortresses to ruins. He is despoiled by all who pass by. He has become the taunt of his neighbors. You have exalted the right hand of his foes. You have made all his enemies rejoice. You have made his sword give way. You have not upheld him in battle. You have brought his glory to an end. You have hurled his throne to the ground. You have cut short the years of his youth. You have heaped disgrace upon him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Look on us, Lord, and and see see how how we are despised. I am the root and stock of David. I am the morning star. How long, O Lord, will you hide yourself forever? How long will your anger burn like a fire? Remember, Lord, the shortness of my life, and how frail you have made the sons of men. What man can live and never see death? Who can save himself from the grasp of the grave? Where are your mercies of the past, O Lord, which you have sworn in your faithfulness to David? Remember, Lord, how your servant is taunted, how I have to bear all the insults of the peoples. Thus your enemies taunt me, O Lord, mocking your anointed at every step. Blessed be the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I am the root and stock of David. I I am am the the morning morning star. Our years wither away like grass, but you, Lord God, are eternal. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next, before the mountains were born or the earth or the world brought forth. You are God without beginning or end. You turn men back into dust, and say, Go back, sons of men. To your eyes a thousand years are like yesterday, come and gone, no more than a watch in the night. You sweep men away like a dream, like grass which springs up in the morning. In the morning it springs up and flowers, by evening it withers and fades. So we are destroyed in your anger, struck with terror in your fury. Our guilt lies open before you, our secrets in the light of your face. All our days pass away in your anger. Our life is over like a sigh. Our span is seventy years, or eighty for those who are strong. And most of these are emptiness and pain. They pass swiftly and we are gone. Who understands the power of your anger and fears the strength of your fury? Make us know the shortness of our life, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Lord, relent. Is your anger forever? Show pity to your servants. In the morning, fill us with your love. We shall exult and rejoice all our days. Give us joy to balance our affliction for the years when we knew misfortune. Show forth your work to your servants. Let your glory shine on their children. Let the favor of the Lord be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. 
Give success to the work of our hands. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our years wither away like grass, but, but you, Lord, Lord God, God, are, are eternal. eternal. In you is the source of life. In your light we see light itself. From the first letter of the Apostle Paul to Timothy. Honor the claims of widows who are real widows, that is, who are alone and bereft. If a widow has any children or grandchildren, let these learn that piety begins at home, and that they should fittingly support their parents and grandparents. This is the way God wants it to be. The real widow, left destitute, is one who has set her hope on God and continues night and day in supplications and prayers. A widow who gives herself up to selfish indulgence, however, leads a life of living death. Make the following rules about widows, so that no one may incur blame. If anyone does not provide for his own relatives, and especially for members of his immediate family, he has denied the faith. He is worse than an unbeliever. To be on the church's roll of widows, a widow should be not less than sixty years of age. She must have been married only once. Her good character will be attested to by her good deeds. Has she brought up children? Has she been hospitable to strangers? Has she washed the feet of Christian visitors? Has she given help to those in distress? In a word, has she been eager to do every possible good work? Refuse to enroll the younger widows, for when their passions estrange them from Christ, they will want to marry. This will bring them condemnation for breaking their first pledge. Besides, they learn to be ladies of leisure, who go about from house to house, becoming not only time wasters, but gossips and busybodies as well, talking about things they ought not. That is why I should like to see the younger ones marry, have children, keep house, and in general give our enemies no occasion to speak ill of us. Already some have turned away to follow Satan. If a woman church member has relatives who are widows, she must assist them. She should not let them become a burden to the church, which ought to be free to give help to the widows who are really in need. Presbyters who do well as leaders deserve to be paid double, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. The scripture says, you shall not put a muzzle on an ox when he is threshing the grain, and also the worker deserves his wages. Pay no attention to an accusation against a presbyter unless it is supported by two or three witnesses. The ones who do commit sin, however, are to be publicly reprimanded so that the rest may fear to offend. I charge you before God, Christ Jesus, and the chosen angels. Apply these rules without prejudice. Act with complete impartiality. Never lay hands hastily on anyone or you may be sharing in the misdeeds of others. Keep yourself pure. Stop drinking water only. Take a little wine for the good for your stomach and because of your frequent illnesses. Some men's sins are flagrant and cry out for judgment now, while other men's sins will appear only later. Similarly, some good deeds stand out clearly as such. Even inconspicuous ones cannot be hidden forever. Conduct yourself in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, and with one mind and one spirit work together for the faith. Do not look to your own interests, but consider those of others. In your attitude toward one another, be of the same mind as Christ. Do not look to your own interests, but consider those of others. From a letter to the Philadelphians, by St. Ignatius of Antioch, Bishop and Martyr. Ignatius, also called Theophorus, to the Church of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, located at Philadelphia in the province of Asia. 
you have found mercy and have been strengthened in the peace of God. You are now filled with gladness because of the passion of our Lord, and by his mercy you are made believers in his resurrection. I greet you in the blood of Jesus Christ. You are my abiding and unshakable joy, especially if your members remain united with the bishop and with his presbyters and deacons, all appointed in accordance with the mind of Christ, who by his own will has strengthened them in the firmness which the Spirit gives. I know that this bishop has obtained his ministry, which serves the community, neither by his own efforts, nor from men, nor even out of vain glory, but from the love of God the Father and of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am deeply impressed by his gentleness, and by his silence he is more effective than the empty talkers. He is in harmony with the commandments as is a lute with its strings. I call him blessed then for his sentiments toward God since I know these to be virtuous and perfect, and for his stability and calm, in which he imitates the gentleness of the living God. As sons of the light of truth, flee divisions and evil doctrines. Where your shepherd is, follow him as his flock. For all who belong to God and Jesus Christ are with the bishop, all who repent and return to the unity of the church will also belong to God, that they may live according to Jesus Christ. Do not be deceived, my brothers. If anyone follows a schismatic, he will not obtain the inheritance of God's kingdom. If anyone lives by an alien teaching, he does not assent to the passion of the Lord. Be careful, therefore, to take part only in the one Eucharist, for there is only one flesh of our Lord Jesus Christ and one cup to unite us with his blood, one altar and one bishop with the presbyters and deacons who are his fellow servants. Then, whatever you do, you will do according to God. My brothers, I overflow with love for you, and with a generous heart I make you strong, although it is not so much I, but Jesus Christ. Although imprisoned for his sake, I fear more because of my imperfection. But your prayers will perfect me in the eyes of God, so that I might yet receive the inheritance promised me by the merciful God. I seek refuge in the person of Christ through the Gospels, and I appeal to the true ministry of the Church through the Apostles. You are built on the foundation of the Apostles and Prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him you are being built into a temple where God in the Spirit shall dwell. Through him, the whole structure is fitted together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you are being built into a temple where God in the Spirit shall dwell. Let us pray. Father, your love for us surpasses all our hopes and desires. Forgive our failings, keep us in your peace, and lead us in the way of salvation. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.